Okay, for part two of the MOSFET experiment, we're going to be building ourselves a little amplifier just like we did for the JFETs. The nice thing about this amplifier now is that the gate voltage is going to be positive while the drain voltage is positive. So we can do this all off of a single power supply. We're going to set our VDD to 12 volts up here, and then we're going to derive the gate voltage as a fraction of this 12 volts. In this case, 47K is close to 50K. So this is about one third of 12 volts. We should be expecting to see about four volts of DC here on the gate. That should give us our gate bias voltage. We're going to apply an input signal, AC coupling here so that the four volts there does not conflict with the zero volts of DC on our signal source. The capacitor will separate the two voltages while allowing the AC to still go through. Then we're going to be doing the same thing on the output end. We're going to have AC coupling so that the output voltage here does not have any of the DC bias that we have here. We're going to have purely AC coming out on V out. So we're going to connect channel one of our oscilloscope up to VS channel two of our oscilloscope up to V out, and we'll be measuring the gain as peak to peak amplitude V out over V in. Gain is always V out over V in. And then for fun, we can unplug the load resistor and see if our gain doubles like it did with the JFET lab. Hopefully it will. So we're A, V, S, we're gonna again pick a one kilohertz sine wave about two volts peak to peak, and uh, that should give us uh, some amplification. We'll find that the JFET amplifier uh, the, uh, has a lot less gain than the MOSFET amplifier does. This should give us seriously more gain. If the gain is higher, we may have to reduce the amplitude of VS so that VOUT does not clip. We'll take that when we get to it. Okay, we'll build the circuit and test it next. We are now going to change our circuit from the DC curve to measuring the, the its response as an amplifier. And what we notice is that with the 47K resistor down here, the gate voltage was just going to be too high. So we went and swapped it out for something about half that size. This is a 24K resistor, red, yellow, orange. And we're going to plug that in the place of, v of R2. So it goes from the gate to ground. Okay, and then we're going to plug in a little jumper that takes us from that intermediate node to the gate node itself. So now we have that voltage going to the gate. And now we can connect up our input side. We have a capacitor going to that gate node also. And that gate that node is getting kind of crowded, but we have enough space. And then our signal generator from here, we need a coaxial cable to go. Do we have coaxial cables? OK. We'll need a coaxial cable to go to here. And in the meantime, let's connect up our output. So we're going to take another capacitor from the drain off to the side. That's this capacitor here. Thank you, sir. So we're going to connect up our signal generator output. We do not use the sync output. We actually use the output output for this. The sync output is just a square wave that's in synchrony with the wave here in case this weave is very small and the oscilloscope cannot trigger on it. So the sync output just puts out a, a five volt square wave, which we don't really need. So let us now connect the signal generator on the input side to that first capacitor. And this end is going to be grounded. Okay. I do not like the way that's sitting. Let's connect it over here. Okay. And then we're going to connect up our probes. So one thing I wanted to show you is that these oscilloscopes, and any decent oscilloscope will have this, has a built-in calibration signal. It's down here in this very corner, and it's just a, kil a square wave at 5 volts. What is it, 1 kilohertz? About yeah, it's a one kilohertz square wave. So if you ever want to check that your scope or your probe is working, just clip them onto there and see if this square wave appears on the screen. So in this case, we got them on both channels. The scope is working. It's ready to go. It's rearing for action. So let us now connect up channel one to the input. And we don't need to ground both probes. Let's just ground the channel two. And that will serve to ground both of them. And then we'll put channel two 
on the output. I have already installed this capacitor here, and then we need our, another, our other 1K resistor, brown, black, red, to go from that terminal to ground. Okay, and so let us now connect our probe from there and the ground to there. I try to build the circuit to make it look like the schematic. So the arrangement you see here is the arrangement you see on paper. It makes the circuit much easier to troubleshoot. So the first thing let's do is let's set up our signal generator. So we want to set it for uh, waveform sign uh, parameters. So frequency, right now with frequency of one kilohertz, we have an amplitude of 100 millivolts peak to peak. Let's see if we can go a little bigger than that. So we want to go down to amplitude. And let's go, I can just type it in. Okay, so one volt peak to peak, and then they enter bottom, yeah. bottom. Yeah. one volt uh, peak. So let's, let's change that to a two volts then. Two volts peak to peak. Okay. And then offset, none, phase, none. Offset won't really matter. And then uh, it should should be able to get the waveform to turn on, right? Channel. Okay. Yeah, bottom left. Oh, there we go. Okay, and there we have it on the screen. Right now it's set for five volts per division. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. One volt per division. That looks like a little bit more than two volts peak to peak. So. Because uh, the uh, function generator is. Does uh, RMS. No, it's uh, actually outputting, assuming you have 50 uh, ohm impedance. Oh, I see. So if you put two volt peak to peak, it's going to actually output four volts peak. Okay. So you can change that to uh, one volt peak to peak, which will actually output two volt peak to peak, since we don't have the 50 ohm impedance. Okay, so we're going. Do, do we have to shut the output off to do that? No, you can go back to uh, waveforms. Waveforms sign. Or sorry, parameters. Parameters. Just amplitude. Change that. change that to a one. Yep. Okay, much better. All right, thanks. Two volts peak to peak. That's good, that's our input wave, okay? And the output is still on because the wave is still there. So now let us turn on our amplifier and see what shows up on channel two. We have V1 set up as our VDD. That's a good sign. Okay. So now what we see is our sine wave is being amplified so much that it's clipping top and bottom. And so the way to get around that is let's reduce the amplitude. So I'm going to have the amplitude. How do we move over one digit? This one here? Yep. Okay. If we make the input smaller, we'll be out of the region where it's clipping. Okay. So what we see is 200 millivolts input. We have around 0.4 volts coming in and the output is still higher and it looks like we're still clipping. It's still distorted. So let's make it even smaller still. And now the scope is unhappy because it's trying to trigger on a very weak signal here. So let us set the scope to trigger on channel two, which is a bigger wave. And now it's holding still. We also see that the wave is kind of noisy. And if we want to clean that up, we can put on the averaging feature. You hit the acquire button and average, turning it on. And what it does, it takes the wave and it averages over itself uh, multiple times. And the noise, which is random, cancels out. And you're left with a much cleaner, less fuzzy signal. So now we have an input and an output. Our input is 200 millivolts peak to peak, and our output is around 800 millivolts peak to peak. And so we now have a gain of about four. And this one, I think, can do even better than that. So, but this shows that we know that it's amplifying because the output is out of sync with the input. It's an inverting amplifier. 
So I'm wondering if there's anything we can do to improve this. The only other thing to do is be to, to tweak this uh, R2 and see if we can get that to work a little better. So let's try that next. Let's put the pot back in it and see if we can optimize R2 to get the best possible recording. This is only going to take us a second to yank out the 24K. Make sure the pot is centered. And now we're just going to use the edge and the middle lead to make this be a variable resistor. <coughs> and what we should see is as we tweak the pot, let's turn the averaging off. And, oh, I guess we need our ground connection here, don't we? Um, where is a good place to connect to ground? You just stick one half of the resistor and use the lead. Yeah, okay, that'll work. Does that want to go in? There we go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, so now what we can do is as we tweak the pot, we can see that we can now get much more gain out of this and much better linearity. The output sine wave is a very nice sine wave. If we put it on a triangle wave to get the nonlinearities to show up. Yeah, we're still on averaging. <laughs> yep, it, it is a little bit sluggish on averaging. But you can see that even with a linear input, we get a nice linear output. So I mean, this amplifier is amplifying much better than the j ever did. It's got more, um, it's got more gain and better linearity than the JFET had. You could change the symmetry. Okay. If you want a, uh, an extra triangle wave, change it to fifty percent. There we go. Okay. And that's doing it because of the averaging. Yeah, the averaging is making it sluggish. You can see there's a little bit of nonlinearity here, but this is still a much better amplifier than the than the uh, than the, uh, the the JFET ever was. So switching back to a sine wave, let's check our gain now. Our input is still 0.2 peak to peak. Our output is one volt per division. And so to measure that, one, two, three, four, a little over four divisions. So four divided by 0.2 is a gain of 20. Yep, this is a gain of 20 now, just from a single transistor. And we may be able to get this even better. Nope, it looks like we found our maximum. Let's shut the averaging off because it's slowing us down here. Yeah. Oh, say it again. Oh, yeah. Let's shut the averaging off. Right about there. That's about the sweet spot. So, so one thing I'd like to keep in mind from DC level on your gate really determines the performance of your amplifier. And the, the, there's a practice that's called biasing, where you create the DC levels that make your transistor the happiest. And this is a happy transistor. It's taking a small wave, boosting it by a factor of 20 with nice linearity. And so uh, a better amplifier than we had before. So when you're running the lab, I may suggest that you just use a potentiometer for R2 because your transistors, these are so sensitive, may be different. So if you use a potentiometer, you can just tweak this until you get the best gain out of it without distortion. And use that as your gain. So remember the formula for gain of a transistor is minus G sub M times RD parallel RL. And let's just for fun, unplug the load resistor and see what we get. So we should be actually seeing a doubling of gain when we unplug the load resistor. And it looks like we do. Now we're go running into an area here. We're getting some distortion. Let's see if we can tweak that out. Yes, we can. So now this is two volts per division. And we have a gain of an amplitude on the output of two, four, six, about seven volts. 
7 volts divided by 0 0.2 is 35. We have a gain of about 35 unloaded right now. So again, not bad for a single transistor. Later, we're going to be doing this with BJTs, and they give you gains up over 100. So um, something to look forward to. But this is what our amplifier does and demonstration. So all I'd ask you to do is make a note of the gain with and without the loader resistor connected and see what kind of a G sub M you get. I will go over the values for VT and G sub M when I go through the data sheet in, in lecture just to get you fully briefed on the lab. Okay, very good.